It is already the end of the first quarter of 2024. Can you believe that? But that's good news for you because that means today's video is a best of. I'm gonna share with you our top five favorite dinners that we've had in January, February, and March of this year. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. We're gonna go backwards leading up to number one. So starting out at number five, we've got the creamy Parmesan pesto skillet. I made this back in January and we absolutely loved it. Check it out. Okay, I've got my basil pesto here and we're gonna add about three tablespoons of this to this bowl. We need about a tablespoon of olive oil. We need a couple of tablespoons of finely grated Parmesan cheese. So I'm just gonna do it by hand. This is what I use when I don't need a whole lot of cheese. It's probably closer to three tablespoons, but we love cheese, so it's gonna be okay. The recipe calls for Dijon mustard. I was out. So I'm just gonna use what I got, and that's spicy brown mustard. So we'll add in about a tablespoon of that. We only need a teaspoon of honey, and we'll add in like a pinch of salt and just a little bit of pepper. Let's we'll stir all of that together. Okay, I've got three chicken breasts here. It was actually two and I split one of them in half. I'm gonna just do it. We're just gonna go in. I'm gonna grab a fork and kind of tenderize the chicken. Not really tenderize, but kind of poke holes in it so this flavor seeps down into it. I don't know that I'm supposed to rub it on both sides, but why not, right? And we're just gonna let this sit out at room temperature while I prep the veggies. This is pretty messy, but here we are, folks. As long as it tastes good at the end, right? I'm gonna wash my hands because we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna chop up some veggies. One thing I don't have to chop up, I use the help of Publix, is my small mushrooms. I got these already sliced. You need eight ounces of those. I've got some asparagus here. I just need to trim off our ends. And then we're gonna cut these into about one inch pieces. I've got about a pound. I love asparagus. I am skipping another green ingredient in this recipe and that is peas. I'm not a fan of peas. So the recipe called for a shallot. They didn't have shallots at Food Lion when I was there. I'm gonna use about, well, this is a small onion. We'll just go with the whole thing. Okay, I take that back. I'm just gonna do half of it. I'll put this in my onion keeper. All of that's chopped. Let's get all of our ingredients and head over to the stove. I've got this large skillet. We're gonna heat it to about medium high and let that heat up really good. I'm gonna also add some olive oil, just about a tablespoon. Our pan is good and hot. I'm gonna give you cheese, I promise. Can you can you step out of the way though? I don't want you to get popped with grease. Come on. There we go. Our pan is good and hot, so we're gonna add in our chicken. So we're gonna cook it on this first side for about two to three minutes just to get it good and golden. We'll flip it and then we're gonna turn the heat down and we will cook it until it's done. Okay, I butterflied the big piece just because it was not cooking fast enough. So that helped. We're gonna tint that. Okay, we've got some charred bits in there, but the recipe says don't worry about that. So we're just gonna throw in a tablespoon of butter and another tablespoon of olive oil. Now to this, we're gonna add all of our mushrooms and we're gonna saute these. We're gonna stir them pretty often, but we're gonna saute them for about three to four minutes. And this is still on medium heat. Okay, it's been about four minutes. I've been going and kind of just scraping up the bottom. Um, the great thing about these caraway pans is it's so non-stick, so things scrape up really easily, even with just this really soft silicone spatula, but it's been the four minutes. We've got all of that sauteed down. At this point, you would add in your shallot. I don't have shallot, I have onion, so that's what we're gonna add in. I'm also gonna add in some seasonings. I have about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano and then a quarter teaspoon each of dried thyme and some red pepper flakes. I'm just gonna stir this around and we're gonna cook this for another two or three minutes just to soften the onion or the shallot. Gosh, it smells so good in here. Now it's time to move on. So we've got flour over here. We need about a tablespoon of that. And we're just gonna sprinkle that in. And then we're also gonna be adding some minced garlic. It calls for six cloves, which makes my heart happy. So let's do that. We're just gonna stir this around and let this cook for about a minute. We're gonna turn the heat to low and we're gonna add in a cup of chicken broth. We'll need another cup later, but for now, just a cup. So I've got my other cup of chicken broth. I've got some cornstarch, about a tablespoon. Just kind of stir it around. It's already coming to a little bit of a simmer, which is good. Also to this, we're gonna add about a quarter cup of heavy cream. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. So turn the heat back up to about medium. Okay, now that it's come up to a simmer, I'm gonna let it simmer for about a minute just to let it thicken just a little bit. 
Now we're gonna add in about a fourth a cup of pesto. So probably two good spoonfuls. And we're gonna throw in our asparagus and let that simmer for a couple of minutes. It has been a couple of minutes. We are going to add the rest of our Parmesan cheese in. You want about a third a cup of finely grated. And my little cheese monster is still in here, so I'll make sure to give her some, do not fear. I'm just gonna stir that around and let it melt, and we're gonna add our chicken back in. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn this temp down to about low. Gracie, is that necessary? If y'all hear that noise in the background, that is Gracie eating out of her bowl. I guess she's eating because she's mad I haven't given her cheese yet. I don't know. Gracie, look. Grace, she always looks the wrong way. You want cheese? Almost got it. There you go. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna let this hang out here for just a couple of minutes to heat our chicken back up, and then it's gonna be time to eat. Winner, winner, some kind of fancy chicken dinner. <laughs> what this is right here, I don't know. We got some shrooms. Mmm, boy, that's good. You know what that reminds me of? What? Marsala. Really? Yes. Like a chicken marsala? Kinda a little bit. You know, okay. it's, it's re reminiscent of that. Okay. Really good flavors. Definitely get some sort of herbs in there or something. Okay, yeah, I've got um, oregano and thyme in there. Yes. We had some couscous <coughs> left over, so that's what I warmed up. But this would be great with mashed potatoes, obviously. Oh, yeah. I just didn't want that couscous to go to waste. And it made it easier. I that didn't have sauce. to make mashed potatoes. That sauce is drinkable. First of all, this is delicious. Tiny bit of spice. You could always leave that red pepper flake out if you want to. And I love that the asparagus is included in the main dish. You don't have to make another green side. Just make some mashed potatoes and you've got a full meal. Any more from the commentator? Oh, all I got to say is amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 That's it right there. It's so good. Really, really good. It's very fancy too. It's like, it is. This would be good for Valentine's yeah. dinner. Yeah. It's like an upscale. Right. Chicken dinner. Oh, wow. what was that? Upscale is we dance with upscale. I reckon. Let me see that dance. No. <laughs> you get one time. <laughs> we can we can just replay. We don't we don't dance. That's not dancing. Baby, nothing you ever do is dancing. That's just a bodily tick. <laughs> Nothing you ever do is dancing. No. Let's just be real clear. Next, if you're craving a cheeseburger, but maybe you don't have the buns or it's really raining outside and you don't want to go outside and grill, you can have the next best thing and that is cheeseburger pasta. It is so good. Okay, we've got things happening. First of all, I've got water heating on the stove so that we can cook our noodles, boil our noodles. And then the only other thing I need to do is chop up this onion really quickly and we're gonna put our ground beef and our onion together in a skillet and start working on that. I would have used my onion chopper, however, like my veggie chopper. I have so many dishes. I've been behind on dishes today. So I don't wanna add yet another big thing that I need to throw into the dishwasher. So that's why I'm just cutting by hand, but I'm already about to start crying. So there's that. Okay, in goes one pound of ground beef. I think the recipe calls for three quarters of a pound, but I'm not splitting this up. We're just gonna use a whole pound. To our ground beef, we're gonna add in our onion as well. It doesn't like me. I, one handed doesn't work. Our pasta water is ready. I've got some penne pasta. We need a cup and a half of uncooked noodles. So I'm gonna measure that out. Sometimes, you know, I surprise myself at how Absolutely uncoordinated I am, but I guess it shouldn't surprise me. You're not surprised? Okay, it's on the floor too. And we're just gonna let this boil for about 10 minutes. So let me set a timer so I don't forget. Oh, you're not seeing that, there you go. And someone has woken up from their nap. There you go, princess. Our pasta is done, let's go drain this and then we'll add it into our meat mixture. So let's just Stir this around and then we're gonna add in all the rest of our ingredients. You need a can of diced tomatoes. I've got this petite diced. I'm also gonna add a couple of tablespoons of dill relish. We need a couple of tablespoons of mustard. Bonus if it makes that noise. Seriously, dude. 
you're gonna be okay. A couple of tablespoons of ketchup. It calls for steak seasoning and then also for um, seasoned salt. This is Steakhouse Seasoned Salt by Auntie Nono, so I'm just gonna use this and just sprinkle a little bit in there. You don't need a lot. And now I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine it. And it says to bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about five minutes. I really don't know how this is supposed to come up to a boil because there's not much liquid. Am I missing something? Hold please. I'm not missing anything. It just says to bring it to a boil, which mine already kind of has. And then it says simmer and let it hang out here for five minutes. So it smells really good. If you're feeding a large crowd, you'll wanna double this recipe. It only serves four. As I was putting away my ketchup and my mustard, I saw this and I thought, you know, the dub sauce would be good in this, I think. So I'm just gonna do like a splash because why not, right? I mean, seriously, just a tiny little bit. But I think that'll add another layer of cheeseburger likeness. We add um, the dub sauce to our hamburger meat when we're making hamburgers, so why not, right? I think this is pretty much good to go. So let me grab our cheese. We're gonna cover it in cheese because it is cheeseburger pasta. I have about a cup of cheese here. And because you're being so patient, yeah, so patient. There you go. Oh, violent. And then on top of that, I'm gonna add in some green onions because it'll be pretty, that's why. <laughs> All right, let's turn the heat off and I'm just gonna let this cheese melt for just a minute and then it's gonna be time to eat. Let's get into this thing here. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty, it's so colorful. It is colorful, it smells good too. Wow, that's really good. That's like a, that is cheeseburger. Good. I mean, that is cheeseburger. Mmm, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like cheeseburger. It is coal approved. I mean, there's no other way to describe this yeah. other than it tastes like a cheeseburger. It does. <laughs> I mean, the tomatoes, everything. I mean, it's just perfect. The it flavors. Is. I have a feeling it's going to be a go backer. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I want more cheese. Yeah. Bless her heart, she ain't never had nothing to eat. Never. Around St. Patrick's Day, I made Guinness beef stew. And it is hands down the best beef stew I've ever made or I've ever tasted. It is so delicious, so check that out. First things first, we're gonna prep all of our veggies. The, this, I took the help of Ingles and got pre-sliced mushrooms. I have these potatoes here. It just calls for baby potatoes, so I picked these up. I do need to cut these in half, so I'm gonna wash these really quickly and do that. You know what, I changed my mind. I did wash them and I'm gonna let them drain. I'm gonna chop those probably closer to last just so nothing browns while I am chopping the rest of it. We need about a cup of carrots chopped, so I'm just going to peel these and chop these really quickly. I also need a cup of celery, so I just grabbed two stalks. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna rinse these and chop these too. And for the carrots, it says to cut it into chunks. That's not quite a cup. Those little carrots, bless their little hearts. Okay, let me go get another. I got a new bag of carrots, so let me get those out of the fridge. Okay, I cut up one more carrot. I feel like that's a little bit better. Okay, so we've got our carrots and celery. I do need to chop up an onion. This is a very large onion. I'm only gonna do about half of it. It does say to just rough chop that as well. Now you need six ounces of bacon, and it says just to cut it into small strips. Okay, that should be good. We're gonna get started over here. You need a large soup pot or Dutch oven. I'm going to heat it to about medium high. We're gonna start by browning our beef. So in here, we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and let that heat through. I've got about two and a half pounds of stew meat here. The directions say to pat it dry. I didn't feel like it was that wet, but apparently it was. Okay, I'm just salt and peppering these. And I'll probably throw a little more salt and pepper on them once they go into the pot. Our pot is nice and hot. I threw on a, an apron. So let's throw our stew meat in here. I'm probably gonna have to work in batches, but we're just gonna brown it on all sides. Ooh, we're popping. It was a little scary there for a second. I didn't wanna film while I was trying to do this, but these are about ready to come out and we'll do another batch. Whew, I would classify that as intense, my friends, but we got it done. It was just quick moving and I don't have a cameraman in here, so I had to do what I had to do. I did add a little more oil with each batch. I did three batches. 
but I have turned this down to medium now. Ma'am, I'm gonna need you to move out of the way. We're gonna add just a little, little bit more oil. First thing we're gonna add is our mushrooms. They're just hanging on. No. No. We're gonna add in our onion and drop some on the floor because that's how we do it. And it calls for three cloves of garlic, so I'm just gonna add in like a tablespoon. And we're gonna let this cook for two or three minutes. I'm gonna kind of scrape the bottom as I go, but once I add liquids in, I can definitely deglaze the pan. While our onions and mushrooms and garlic are going, I'm gonna cut these in half. This one is, ooh, look at the color of that one. I'm excited. That one was rather large, so. These are gonna be cut in half and they'll be added here in just a few minutes. I just didn't want them to brown while we were waiting. You need two cups of potatoes. I probably don't need this entire thing. Another one of the pretty ones. Okay, let's go back over to the stove. This has been cooking for a couple of minutes. We'll let it go one more minute. Next, we're gonna add in our bacon and we're gonna cook it until it's browned. So it's gonna take about five minutes. Please. Just hang on. And we're gonna let that cook on medium for about five minutes. This has been cooking for about five minutes. And now we're gonna add in our celery and our carrots. Okay, this is gonna cook for another three to five minutes. Time for our next step. And that is about three tablespoons of flour. We're just gonna sprinkle this in and mix it through and let it cook for a couple of minutes. At this point, it says to add in your Guinness to deglaze the pan, but let me just show you. There's not much to de deglaze in here. It kind of already did that on its own, but it says to use a 14.9 ounce Guinness. I don't know what this is. Uh, oh, it's 11 ounces. We're gonna go with it. So let's pour this in. And again, it says to deglaze the pan, so just kind of scrape along the bottom. And then, ooh, that beer smell. I am not a beer fan, so I don't love the smell, but I do love the taste of anything cooked in beer, so there's that. Next, we're gonna add in three cups of beef broth, and then we need about four tablespoons of tomato paste. I need to get another one of these. Now it says to mix it well. I did turn it back up to about medium high because we want this to come up to a bubble. This is gonna be delicious, I just know it. While this is coming up to temperature, we need to add our beef back in. I can't do that one-handed, so I'll be right back. Okay, that's been added in. We're gonna add in our potatoes. And then the recipe calls for three sprigs of thyme, which I went and pulled off of my indoor garden. I'm gonna throw that in too. Okay, it is barely starting to bubble, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on. Now that I've got it covered, I have turned it down to medium low. We're gonna let it simmer here, just very gently bubbling for two hours. After two hours, I'm gonna remove the lid and for the final hour, I'm gonna cook it here with the lid off. It has been a couple of hours, so let's remove the lid and we're gonna let it continue to cook for another hour with the lid off. Okay, we did remove the three little sprigs of thyme. It was just the stems, obviously, the thyme cooked off of it. I've already taste tested this just to check the salt content. I add, added just the tiniest bit of salt y'all so time has run out on that it's time to eat it's that. time to eat and it is so good oh my word y'all i wish you could smell this it has been torture these past three hours torture she's trying to kill me tank man the flavor in that stew is amazing the beef falls apart yeah real beefy flavors but like it's smooth it's not like there's not like one thing that's overpowering in There's there. nothing that's like really pungent or... Yeah. Yeah. There's a fly in here. It just flew by my ear. Well. Oh, there he is. He's probably it. trying to get him a bite too. <laughs> He's been smelling it all day. <laughs> so this will be beef. good for leftovers too. Oh, yeah. We're going to be eating this for probably a couple of days. Just depending on how much you and Cole eat tonight. <laughs> when you live with two guys, there's not many leftovers. Yeah. Let me know in a comment below how many guys you live with and if you ever have leftovers. Mm. If you are looking for a Cajun flair to a meal and you want to use my favorite pasta, orzo, 
then you need to check out Cajun Chicken Orzo. This is a huge hit in our house. To get started, I'm gonna heat this to about medium high. You want a really large pan, ideally one that has a lid. While it is heating, I'm gonna throw in about a half a tablespoon of butter and about a tablespoon of olive oil. Okay, we just have a couple of things to do. We need to finely mince or dice this onion. It's about a half an onion, but it was a rather large one. We just need a couple of tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes. I'm gonna chop them super duper fine because I'm not a big fan of the texture. I know they make a paste, and I thought I bought some sun-dried tomato paste. I found it at Aldi. Cannot find it for the life of me. So I'm gonna make kind of my own paste right now because I want this chopped up as finely as possible. That's all the chopping and dicing I need to do. Now we need to season our chicken. So the recipe called for three chicken breasts sliced into small strips. I did two because I had really large chicken breasts. I've got some Tony Chatteries, Catcheries. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Creole seasoning, Cajun seasoning. Kind of toss it around, flip it over so I can get to the underside. And I'm just gonna eyeball this. We like spicy, so I don't mind if I kind of over season. And then it also says to add just a little bit of salt, so we'll do that too. I think there's salt in this, is there not? Yes, yeah, the first ingredient. And that's all we're gonna add then. Let's go over to the stove top and I can always season it after I put it in the pan as well. I'm gonna add a little more of this Creole seasoning to the top here. We're gonna flip it here in just a second. Cameraman has entered the kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> we don't have to worry about this cooking all the way through right this moment because it's gonna cook for quite a while. We're just getting it kind of browned or seared on each side. Going in with our chicken is our onion some garlic, a tablespoon of tomato paste, and our sun-dried tomatoes. Gosh, that smells good already. Mm -hmm. We're gonna turn it to about low heat and let this cook for another five minutes. It's just gonna soften those onions. Our onions are good and soft. I've got one cup of orzo pasta here. I'm gonna pour this in. And we're gonna let this cook for about a minute before we add our liquid. All right, so it's been about a minute. I've got a cup of chicken broth. We're gonna add that in. And we wanna bring this up to a simmer. What'd you say? I said, I'm gonna burn you. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Right. He said, what if we threw some jalapeno in there? I said, well, we got one in the fridge, so here we are. Oh, it's coming up to a simmer over there. I gotta go oh, over there and do my okay. thing. You better hurry up over better here. Hurry. Oh. Don't cut yourself. Okay, I'll be back. So he's bringing our jalapeno over because this has come to a simmer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down just a bit. Go ahead. Oh, he is not playing. You better wash your hands good and don't touch your eyes. We are gonna let this simmer. I'm gonna put the lid on it. We'll, we'll stir it every so often, but simmer for about 20 minutes. It's gonna cook that orzo and it'll cook those jalapenos down too. I'm gonna do 19 because we waited an extra minute or so before we turned it down. As this is cooking for 20 minutes, you wanna make sure you're checking on the liquid sitch. So you don't want it to dry out. I did add probably another half a cup of chicken broth about mm, seven or eight minutes ago because my orzo was soaking it up and it was about to be dry and the orzo wasn't cooked yet. So just keep an eye on that. You may have to add more liquid. Let's check on, let's check the chicken. <laughs> Chicken check. It is looking really good. We're gonna add in some baby spinach. I removed the stems. You don't have to do that. I do that, cause I don't like them. You need about a cup. You don't need a whole lot. We're gonna let that wilt. Actually, I'm gonna put the lid back on it for just a second. That'll help the wilting process speed up. What is it? You gotta wilt it down. <laughs> Y'all miss. We are wilting it down. Y'all miss so much when the camera is turned off. I, I'm sorry for y'all because it's it's pretty comical in this uh, kitchen. All right, here. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna put some, uh, that's right, we're putting some heavy cream in there. That's right, only about a fourth a cup, not a lot. We don't put no more than a quarter. Whoa, now, whoa, I'm just kidding. Would you stop? <laughs> God, I can't do nothing with you. <laughs> All right, let's stir that around. We're gonna let that heat through. And then I've got some grated Parmesan cheese. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Let's add that in. You're gonna add in about three tablespoons. I grated a little extra so we could put some on top. I like you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is really good. Definitely getting the Creole spices and flavors in there. Good. Garlic flavor. 
I mean, it is not bland. No. It's hitting hardcore. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, Cole, Cole is in the other room, and he just said, oh, yeah. That is super flavorful. The word bland is nowhere in this house right now. <laughs> Salad with the um, Caesar dressing. Is that Caesar? It's pesto Caesar, yes. Man, what a combination of flavors. Yeah. <laughs> so the good. Creole seasoning is very rich mm -hmm. in that Creole flavor, for mm -hmm. sure. The chicken just melts. The chicken is, it is so fantastic. good. It is not dried out at all. So good kick of spice from the chili pepper right. that's in there. Yeah. I don't feel like the chili pepper adds a lot of flavor to this, no. if you know what I mean? Like it doesn't take away. No. Or, it just add a little more heat. Just add a little bit more heat. Mm -hmm. Which yes. we like. Y'all gotta make this one. And the winner, no surprise here, especially if you leave it up to Steven, that is Mandy's Grilled Muffo letta sandwiches it's not really a muffaletta or muff how do you say that i've seen it spelled two different ways with a u and with an a so muff uh or muff uh uh i uh uh i don't know how it goes <laughs> this is the one that i created is not a true muffaletta you'll see what i'm talking about <laughs> i'm not sure what bread a true muffaletta uses but i found this italian bread which is kind of thick sliced at our grocery store. Got enough for three sandwiches here. We are gonna butter one side of each piece of bread. So let me do that first, I'll be right back. One side is buttered. I'm gonna put it buttered side down and it'll just be, it'll just have to be okay. Um, just so that we can load these sandwiches up. Steven requested mayonnaise on his. So, like I said, this is a loose translation. We're just using the muffaletta olive um, salad or olive relish. Do we need mayonnaise on both sides? I mean, I'll do light mayo on the other side. What do you think? I'm gonna open this up. Steven's already popped the top and smelled it. <laughs> he sniffs everything. Every food, every everything, he has to sniff it. I don't, I, it's just his thing. So, here it is. We're gonna let I'm not gonna completely drain it because I have a feeling the juice is a good thing. But I, I don't want it to get too soggy either. Oh, I need to be heating up my, my griddle. Let's do that. Now we're gonna load it up with some ham and salami. And I also have some extra pepperoni, so why not? This is three different types of salami. I just found this in the um, near the deli at my grocery store. Now, cheese. We have a little bit of this Italian cheese left, so I'm gonna sprinkle that on there. I've got some Monterey Jack if I need to shred that too. I don't think I need the Monterey Jack cheese. We're just gonna go with the Italian because that was plenty. All right, so now we just need to flip this over and we're ready to go to the griddle. I'm just gonna spray the griddle. Even though I've got butter on these, I'm gonna spray it in each spot for each sandwich. You know what? I'm gonna throw a little garlic powder on top. Just a little bit, not a lot. Just for a little something extra, you know? All right, let me turn this heat back up a little bit. Okay, I test flipped the first one and it went okay. <laughs> Let's flip the second one. You just gotta be, you gotta be quick. There we go. Let's let these hang out on this side for a little bit. Make sure all of that cheese melts. Cole just tried it and he said, mmm. Is this mine? No. <laughs> yes. It's, it's mine. mine. <laughs> that looks good. You ready? I'm hungry. Are I'm you? Just checking here. Oh, yeah. Got the good stuff. I put mayonnaise in there too because I know you wanted that. Oh, we didn't tink. Mmm. <laughs> tink. Man. Did I do good? Wow. I might like this better than the. Jason's Deli one. Stop it. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Cole, what do you think about that? I probably have to agree. Cole agrees. Mm. I did so good. I'm not the biggest fan of the bread. I mean, not of this bread, yes, but oh. Jason's Deli bread, I'm not the biggest fan of the Jason's Deli bread, but it's good. I like the crunchiness of it, but this has got the crunchiness and then that buttery flavor. But the, the layers of flavor here, starting with the bread, crunchy, buttery, then the mayonnaise gets into that mm -hmm. olive. Oh, and then it just goes 
perfectly with that mm -hmm. uh, with that meat that's in there, the pepperoni, a little bit of spice. And then there's some Italian cheeses in there too. Mm. I mean, that's one of the best sandwiches I've ever eaten. You ain't got no more, have you? Mm -mm. <laughs> If you want to see more of our top five from the last quarters, last year, the year before, I've got a playlist where I've got all of our best ofs. So if you're looking for some more inspiration, go check that out. As always, we appreciate you being here and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye y'all.